Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining the broadcast today, and thank you for letting us be a part of your day. I want to thank you as well if you're one of those believers who has a hankering in their soul to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what your age is. If you're 90 years of age and you're still growing in the Lord, then you are my kind of person. Well, right now my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter, the end of chapter 2. 2 Peter 2, if you can, get out your own copy of God's Word and join me there. 2 Peter chapter 2, I'll begin to read at verse 20 here in a moment. In a moment, I want to encourage you to get a free sample packet of gospel tracts from us. That packet contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. One of those tracts is in my hand right now entitled, Writing the Religious Merry-Go-Round. I'm going to highlight that one. I'll explain what a gospel tract is. I'll tell you about how to get a hold of us, giving us your name and address so that we can send you the free sample packet. All that kind of stuff is going to happen right now. Get your Bible ready. Get something on which you can take some notes. Let me lead into the Bible study this way. While I was walking to the office today, I usually do walk to the office. It's about a mile. While I was doing that, I received news about a Christian college in the country of Canada, the college has a law school attached to it, and this college was uh, has been holding some pretty good biblical standards and beliefs over the years. Well, the courts in Canada decided to not recognize the degrees earned at that law school because this college holds to biblical standards on marriage and sexuality. Well, today I learned that that college has decided to not enforce those biblical standards so that their degrees in their law school will be recognized by other law schools. Now, trust me, I don't know any more about the story and the situation than what I've just told you, but I am confident that the board of trustees at that college must have really struggled with their decision. But in my view, they made a wrong decision. In the end, friend, this Christian college valued the acceptance of their degrees by the lost people there. They held that in higher value than the truth of God's word. And oh, by the way, just to be fair here, in my own country here in the United States, our history is riddled with the same kind of event. Universities that once trained preachers for God's word and did it well now deny every tenet of the Bible possible. Now, remembering all this is going to help us as we come to 2 Peter 2, beginning at verse 20. Get your Bible ready. It's something on which you can take some notes. Now, I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's an evangelism tool. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And the one in my hand is entitled, Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. And it begins this way. Merry-Go-Rounds are fun to ride, but they just don't take you anywhere. Many people are attempting to reach heaven by merry-go-rounds, but it's futile. Read on to discover the real way to gain eternal life. And it talks about how that good works are just no more than a spiritual merry-go-round, being a religious person, being sincere in your religion and so on. Those are things that make you feel good in your heart, but they do not deal with a sin issue. This gospel track lays out clearly that you must receive Christ as your Savior. Riding the religious merry-go-round, just one of the over 40 
30 gospel tracts in that sample packet. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information at the end of the program. Well, just give us your name and address. You can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. With your Bible open here, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 begins this way. For if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. We're going to stop there. Now, the verses here, including the one I did not read, these verses are all about false teachers. We've also called them by the term apostates. Now, that simply means that these are religious teachers who, yes, teach error, but they also do know what the Bible does say, what the Bible clearly does say, but they have rejected the Bible truth. Many times, these false teachers have grown up in good Bible teaching churches. How do I know that? I've met them and they've told me so. To walk through verses 20 to 22, I'm using four words, all beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant. My first word was the word escaped. It's actually found in verse 20. And we looked at this whole idea on Monday's broadcast. Basically, these teachers learned some key truths of the scripture. They began to implement those truths in their lives, but then they left it. They never were saved. They were took on some of the morality of the Bible, but never took on Christ as Savior. But that brings me to my second word here. And this is a key word for today. The word is entangled. Entangled. It too is found in verse 20. Verse 20 goes on to say this. They are again entangled therein. That, that word therein refers to sinful pollution. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now, earlier in the lives of these apostates, these false teachers, they had begun to know God's truth and how to escape escape sin, how to escape the pollution of the world system. They learned that uh, there were two roads. There was a broad road that leads to destruction. There was a narrow road that leads to eternal life. Well, they started to go down the narrow road, putting on some of the life patterns of a Christian, but then uh, they got entangled. If you were to stop, and, and I was sitting down with you, and I were to write out the Greek word translated entangled here, guess what English word you would immediately see? You would see the word implicate, implicate. Now, in our day, when somebody is implicated in a crime, it means that this person's life or actions are some way intertwined in the crime that was done. Now, the person may not have done the actual criminal act, but they helped to get it done in some way, fashion, or form. That implicated person is in trouble, and you understand that. Well, these false teachers, they knew the Bible. They know Bible truth, but they began to intertwine other things along with this truth. Just like that Canadian college is intertwining the world's standards about sexuality into their Bible standards, you know what's going to happen. Eventually, one set of standards or the other is going to be thrown out altogether, and it's amazing how it always seems to be the Bible standards that get thrown out. Even true believers are warned about this very kind of entanglement. Take, for instance, what we read over in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Here's what it says. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. That's what the verse says. You understand that if you're in the military, you're in, let's say you're in the army and you're stationed at Fort Bragg, you do not open a donut shop outside the fort there and have to give part of your time to the donut shop because all your time belongs to the army. But Jesus himself warned those that were following him in his day. He said, no man can serve two what? 
No man can serve two masters. He's either going to hold to one and deny the other or deny the first and hold to the second. You know the story. Well, here in verse 20, these false teachers now had earlier who had put on the moral values of Jesus. They began to walk in the moral system. Their life began to be cleaned up externally. They walked in what looked like the way of Christ. They did so until their heart desired to do certain practices or believe certain ideas that were contrary to God's way. And those passions took over. They wanted to be sure. They wanted all the benefits of Jesus. They wanted Jesus' love. They wanted his mercy, his forgiveness and grace and so on. But they want to intertwine or entangle worldly ideas and worldly practices, polluted practices, into the life that's supposed to be, be belonging to Christ. Well, eventually, one set of standards was going to win. Either these people would abandon a polluted life and follow Christ, or they would abandon Christ to follow the worldly pattern and please the world. Lord willing, tomorrow, we're going to look at my next E word, which is the word end. The end of these false teachers will now be worse for them than what their end would have been had they never heard the gospel at all. For this broadcast, let me deal with a well-known truth. But it's a truth we need to repeat regularly. The truth is this. Not everyone that says they are a Christian is a Christian. Not everyone that says they are a Christian is a Christian. Jesus himself said this, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Everyone who was ever saved, whether it was the Old Testament time, whether it was New Testament time, it doesn't matter. Anybody who ever got saved, got saved by one method. They got saved by faith in the truth of God, the truth of God they had. To be sure, the truth had by the people in the time of Moses is different and less than we have today. But no one was ever, nor will they ever be saved from their sin stain by being a moral person, a religious person, or a baptized person. I believe in baptism, but it sure can't take your sin stain away. People got saved when they placed their faith in Jesus' finished work, which he did at Calvary and did it with the capstone of the empty tomb. You and I cannot see each other's faith. All we can see, though, is the altered or changed life patterns which salvation brings to our lives. As you and I see the fruit of righteousness persisting in somebody else's life, we can then say, now that person belongs to Jesus. That person is genuinely saved from their sin. That person is a child of God. Oh, beloved friend, love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Does your life reflect that you've been born again, or are you playing games with the God of heaven and your eternal destiny? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.